Welcome. You are watching Line Screw One. Well, hello, tubers. Hope you're doing well wherever you are in this crazy YouTube universe. First of all, I want to start this video by saying a big thank you to the current and former staff of North Fraser Pretrial and all the wonderful support that they've shown me both privately and online. Regarding my last video about the North Fraser escape, and the absolute failure of management, particularly the uh, leader, Warden Chima. Now, there is a lot of, uh, let's just say, leakage of information that has uh, come to me through these uh, people, not only friends, family of current and former staff, which of course I know will drive the uh, management team completely crazy. So I, I do have to preface this video by saying that uh, I'm always extremely cautious about what I'm talking about so that I don't empower any further escapes. But the irony of this escape is that, um, you know, this dirtbag that escaped actually did more for improving security at North Fraser than, than uh, Warden Chima or any previous warden has done because now at least the RCMP are on the grounds and they are armed. And as I've told you previously, which is publicly known, and it's been public policy for the corrections branch of British Columbia to not arm their officers. Yeah, that's right. I mentioned that in the previous video. They took away the shotguns, they took away the pistols, they took away the tasers. Yeah, and now staff just have a stick, pepper spray, and some handcuffs. It's almost a good thing that staff didn't even confront these um, fake contractors that broke this guy out of jail because they probably could have been shot. Uh, there's always a little bit of good that comes out of the bad, and I guess this escape is affecting some change. Just like my videos will be affecting change because I'm exercising my charter rights with uh, a lot of discretion to affect change because the branch hates publicity. They hate people talking. They uh, constantly scare and intimidate their staff from talking about what's wrong. The workplace environment there has become so toxic. The West scores, which is workplace engagement scores, they're, they're in the dumpster. It's a complete dumpster fire of um, how, how bad the morale is, how bad the leadership is, and uh, the complete failure of um, proactive ability to manage policy and staff deployment. Now, I know in a previous video, people go, ah, you got things wrong, whatever, you know. You know, there was a lot of great tips on exactly what happened and uh, you know, I can't really say hey this is the exact vulnerability because I don't want other people to try to escape from lawful custody because that would just be wrong so you know I have to really be very guarded with my words but it's pretty safe to say and the tip off of how they got out is this picture which was released which you know this is an image from a, a camera that was captured I have a pretty good idea where that is because I worked in that control room probably, I don't know, 15,000 hours. So it's completely obvious that the entire external perimeter security, roof, walls, backyard, let's just say, have been neglected. And I have reports that cameras have been down for weeks and not fixed. I've already mentioned that the sensor system, which is archaic, has never been very reliable. They need to fix that. And the actual policy that is implemented by the warden, and he has the full responsibility for staff deployment and policy, well, it's been neglected. And the fact that staff aren't even armed, well, that's a failure of even a higher level of policy making decision. But obviously a lot of it at the local level completely rests upon the incompetence, and that's just my opinion of warden chima for not correcting these things because obviously he's not a visionary warden who wants to be proactive no he's reactive as most wardens in the past have been 
So he's suffering the consequences, and of course, I'm confident that he doesn't like these types of videos being made. Now, this, of course, is not a personal attack against him. He could be a great father, a great brother, a great husband, a great provider for his family, uh, an honest person in his private life, but his professional life as a senior government official, well, that's up for debate. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. And I'm shining some light and seeing where the cockroaches run, which is my charter right of free speech to do. And at the same time, balancing that and being very careful and cautious is not to reveal even further security deficiencies that I'm aware of and that I've been made aware of. But I have uh, been notified that there has been a lot of staff corruption as of late. And even that escaped prisoner was found with cell phones. And uh, several cell phones were smuggled in, including narcotics. So, well, I guess having a cell phone in prison is a handy device to have to facilitate an escape. Now, these devices and substances were found, uh, I guess, during some sort of subsequent search in the, the, the recent uh, several weeks. So that uh, brings to question corruption, which uh, there, there's always been a serious problem with corruption at North Fraser pretrial. I personally was working one day when Roger Moore was arrested smuggling drugs into the facility that was obviously paid for by gangsters and people involved in the criminal lifestyle. So we're essentially in a war here, and uh, the criminals are prepared, but we're not because of poor management decisions. The criminals are armed, the criminals are well-funded, the criminals can beat the system, but the staff cannot. I fail to understand why there is not airport-style level screening for staff members. I see it at nuclear power plants, I see it at other prisons, but apparently at North Fraser pretrial, it's not required, in spite of the fact that so many high profile inmates are there from around the world. North Fraser pretrial has seen war criminals to international fugitives to mass murderers. Even Willie Picton lived there for years. Now, North Fraser pretrial is so notorious that last year it was ordered to pay nearly one million dollars to a former staff member that I worked with and it took him years to fight for that justice and the people involved in that actual racial discrimination case still work there and several of the staff that were involved in the racial discrimination case have even been promoted and none of them have ever been fired that's the type of facility we're talking about. That's the type of leadership we're talking about. It's absolutely ridiculous and it's got to stop. But the public needs to know about it. And these type of videos do affect change because I have the right to free speech to actually facilitate change when the staff members cannot speak. Clearly, so many areas of security in terms of contractor access, rooftop access, wall access, fence access, has been absolutely neglected. Staff have been trying for years to affect change, positive change to make that facility safer, but management is always in the way of progress. It's absolutely pathetic and shows the incompetence of management. And since there is only one leader, Warden Chima, the responsibility and failure rests with him. Please post your comments down below, and as always, keep your wheels in the ground. I got you, I got you